What's good, good people? Welcome to Whole Views. Thank you for clicking that thumbnail. My name is Corey, and today we're going to be discussing the Superman legacy casting of David Cornsweet. A lot of people are saying, and you see a lot of the images being used, talking about David Cornsweet becoming the new Superman. And you see he's been cast and they're announcing it. All the different outlets have been publicizing it. You know, the YouTube uh, pundits, we are out here, we're doing our videos and we're talking about it. And the one thing that you're going to notice is that there is a very strong similarity in the face and jawline nose area between this guy and Henry Cavill. Like, you would imagine this guy is just a younger version of Henry Cavill. And while it may appear that with the pictures that they show you on the screen, like I watched Pearl and I had no idea that this is the same guy that I watched in Pearl. It just never came across to me that it's the same person because in actuality, actors can be shot from different ways and lit in different ways to where they don't really necessarily look the same way in every single condition. Like he might put on weight, he might lose weight, he might have more scruff in his face, he may have less scruff in his face, they may style his hair differently, and he may not end up looking anything like Henry Cavill. The casting actually means less than nothing to me because that's not even the purpose of my video or me talking about it here on camera. The, the main reason I wanted to make a video is that I feel like business decision-wise, DC would do better if they took a break. Please stop, I wish they would stop announcing everything or confirming every rumor that you hear coming out of Hollywood and in the trades that report on this stuff. Now, I understand that casting is a big deal and anytime a cast member of a film is announced, it's gonna be publicized and people are gonna react to it and talk about it. In this instance, I feel like the casting is not a big deal because this movie is not coming out soon. I know, I know that it has a release date, I believe of July, 2025. That's two years from now. Like this is a moment in time where I feel like people are gonna get excited and you see some people really support this move and champion this move. And then you also see some people still clinging on to Zack Snyder's DC and, and the DCEU and just bring Cavill back. And if you're gonna get a guy that looks this much like Cavill, you should just bring Cavill back and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yo, why, why do we even care? We're not gonna see an image of this until late 2024 at best. Let's be real, a, a ambitious release date of July 2025th, where well, we're still in a writer strike at the moment of me recording this, there's a good chance, a good strong chance that you're not going to see this in 2025. It'll be 2026, three years from now when this movie actually gets released. So the idea of like getting excited or hyped up about casting or announcing casting, it's just like, ah oh man, give it a break. People still associate all DC comics with Zack Snyder's Justice League, with Zack Snyder's like Justice is great that they're still heavily promoting on HBO Max and I'm gonna continue to call it HBO Max because that is the, the smart name to have for an HBO property. I digress. They shouldn't be announcing everything. The reason why I say that is because I can think of three specific announcements that have been made in 2023 as of recording this. And it's like, yo, you, sh you don't need to say that. And if that's a rumor, you don't need to come out and confirm that. First one, they announced a while back that Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot's cameos in The Flash were cut. Well, we come to find out Gal Gadot, she still shows up and her appearance is less than nothing. It is really and truly a cameo. I'm glad they left it in. Uh, the fact that Henry Cavill was cut, why tell us that? At the point of them announcing that or confirming that rumor, because I'm sure it was a leak, that stuff was 100% unknown to the public. So why confirm that they were in it, but you're taking them out. Don't, like, don't do that. Just let that rumor just be out there and leave it unaddressed, say no comment. Uh, more recently, you know, with the, with the ending of Zack Snyder's run and this last Aquaman that's coming out in, I believe, December of 2023, you have the talking of, oh, if Jason Momoa is done with Aquaman, he may turn up as Lobo. Stop, we haven't even finished with this, and you're already trying to move this person into that. Like, pump the brakes, slow it down. You don't have to be telling us all your plans. Even when James Gunn just gives his opinion 
about other superhero films. He talks about like the movies are very lazy and like people don't care about the characters. And it's like, that can be said about the movie that your studio just released with The Flash. Like there was the stuff going on with Barry and his mom at the beginning and the end, but everything else was stuff that was like negligible. It was just stuff happening. And nobody really cared about that stuff that happened in the middle of the film. And this is a, a large portion of the reason why that film is not making money. It's not getting good reviews. It's not getting positive word of mouth. Stop telling us all the things that are gonna happen or should happen or could happen or what you think about this. The whole property of DC, DC Films and, and James Gunn and all the casting and all the plans, put it under lock and key and move in silence. And then when things start happening, let them happen. And like, let the audience be wowed by things. Let us be surprised by things. If you can recall, and I know I'm a little bit older, but if you could recall, people went nuts when we saw Samuel Dell Jackson at the end of Iron Man in 2008. And it was very simple connecting this movie to other movies that would come. And then you, it was a very small thing when you saw Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, Tony Stark show up at the end of uh, Edward Norton's Incredible Hulk, like very small things. Allow the connections to be small, very, very small, and keep some cards close to the vest. So when fans go, we can be surprised. We can be wowed by, oh, I didn't know y'all were doing that. They've already said like, we're far away from casting our next Batman. Like, let that be the running thing. And then surprise us with, oh, Bruce Wayne is in this new Superman legacy. It's like his picture is taken, done. Like that's, that's very cool to have a picture of him and that's the actor you're going with. And we've already shot such and such amount of little cameos and cool stuff. But what you don't need to do, what you absolutely don't need to do is tell us every move you're gonna make for the next 10 years. Like, just, just stop. Now, I know this is a casting and it's a good casting. It's, you know, good job. You got your Superman. But just stop. Let, let the audience take a break so they can disconnect from identifying DC with Zack Snyder stuff. And then you can just roll out the plans for what you plan to do. That's That would be my approach. That's what I think is smarter. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section because I think it's kind of foolish to uh, continuously put out every move you plan to make uh, in the eyes of the public. And just, I don't know, it doesn't give the audience a chance to disconnect with what they once knew and what you are moving towards. So again, that's my position. Let me know yours in the comment section, y'all. Enjoy yourself, guard your heart, and go watch something good.